Would your members, do you think, be open to accepting a one-off payment for April 22 to April 23, a, a kind of bonus payment? Uh, well, nothing's off the table, but that's not what we've been seeking. Um, you know, we want something substantial that will actually help people pay their bills and will encourage people to stay in the NHS. But as I say, nothing's off the table. Um, uh, but any offer that did come from the government, and I just echo what Elaine has just said, there was no offer today. It was very prelim preliminary discussions, but at least a, a recognition that to try and address the current dispute, they can't just focus on pay for 23, 24. They still have to look at pay for 22 to 23. And so th that's, I think, which, uh, what gave uh, some of the unions, including my own, um, a bit more, uh, we're a bit more hopeful. Um, optimism is probably too strong a word, I think. Mm. I wouldn't say we're optimistic at this point in time, but any offer that did come, we would have to go out and talk to members about it. It wouldn't be my decision. It would sure. be the people who work in the NHS who will take that decision. Of course. The other thing that's being floated, and I wonder what you think of this, and of course you'd have to put it to your members if it, if it actually turns out to be a re reality, is backdating the 23 to 24 pay rise to this month, to January. Well, I heard someone mention that on, on your programme, actually, and that hasn't been put to us. Uh, and all of it would have to depend on what the actual figures were like when you took them over a, over a year. So if it was, if we were talking a fairly low sum for 23, 24, and that backdated, then no, I don't think it would be enough because we're in a position at the moment where, you know, the average pay, uh, the average pay increase that most staff have had in the NHS is around four and a half percent when inflation is galloping ahead. Uh, you know, it's been 11, 12 percent and they just can't afford to continue to live on the pay levels that they've got. So uh, it would all depend on the figures. It would depend on what it meant in terms of actual uh, difference it made to people's pay yeah, packets. Do you think the next step should be the health secretary, for example, calling yourself in, the general secretaries in, the heads of the unions for the next meeting? I think that would be helpful, but I think also we need to be speaking to the Chancellor and possibly even the Prime Minister, but certainly the Chancellor, because we need to speak to the people who hold the pulled the purse strings. Otherwise, we'll never release enough money to actually put... Uh, you know, additional pay into people's pockets. And that's what's critical. That's what will, that's what needs to happen for us to be able to call off these strikes. No one wants these to take place. Certainly our members don't want to be taking strike action on Wednesday. But at this point in time, that's where we are. Right. And do you worry about losing public support as this goes on? Of course, uh, you know, I think at this point in time, the, the, gov the public is definitely with us. Um, you know, the, the, the disasters, the chaos that we see every single day in the NHS aren't being caused by these strikes. Uh, you know, and it's, and it's our members and it's the people who work, the paramedics, the nurses, the healthcare assistants, who are the ones that are having to support patients day in and day out through this chaos. And the public can see that. And they can see what's happened to pay. I mean, just today, I understand that, um, or the other day, Sainsbury's offered a, an £11 an hour minimum for their, their workforce. Uh, well, the NHS is still paying £10.37. Now, that, that tells you why they're losing workers, why people are leaving to go and work in other jobs. And that's pretty much replicated as you go further up the scales as well. People can leave, get different jobs, get better paid jobs and less stressful jobs. And that's one of the reasons for the crisis in the NHS. OK, thank you both very much. Christina McInerney and Elaine Sparks, thank you for joining us on Newsnight. Thank you.